Hello, I've just had a cold shower and I have cold showers regularly because it balances me out. I'm a bit crazy, so it helps me in that way. I had a history of depression before I was diagnosed and it stabilizes my mood quite nicely. Also, it's very good for uh, kind of boosting the immune system and it has uh, anti-inflammatory effects in general. You know, lots of people like to, well, lots of athletes, I don't know a lot about lots of people, but uh, lots of athletes have ice baths, it helps them to recover, um, and has many other benefits. Uh, acting against neuroinflammation is one of those benefits. Um, another thing, in this heat wave, it's also useful, because... <laughs> uh, Stops you getting too hot, that's important. Um, but heat treatments can also be effective, and sweating can be a good thing. Um, the other thing I would recommend, or I would suggest, I don't like to recommend anything, because I'm not a doctor, not yet, anyway. And if I was, I'd be a research doctor, so not a medical doctor. But I would recommend this book, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer, it's very good because it not only talks about a ketogenic diet, it also talks about things that can complement a ketogenic diet. And um, non-toxic drugs that have metabolic targets that can act synergistically with a ketogenic diet. Um, because the ketogenic diet for me is not enough, so you would need to add it with other things if you have an advanced malignancy. If you have a more solid tumour, maybe a ketogenic diet and fasting can cause that tumour to at least stop growing uh, or be more defined so you could potentially have surgery to remove it or it may regress, uh, may or may not. We don't know, um, but yeah, interesting. Um, another book. Fight Cancer with the Ketogenic Diet. It's more specific to the ketogenic diet. Um, and that's a good book. Um, another thing I will add to that is something that I have been researching since I attended a um, conference recently. I was just reminded. Um, Way of, a way of uh, testing efficacy for uh, the ketogenic diet when you're testing for your blood glucose and blood ketones is to um, look at the glucose ketone index, um, Professor Thomas Seyfried's glucose ketone index. Um, that's a way of monitoring if you're in a, a proposed therapeutic zone for cancer management for brain cancer. So you would uh, do this very simple formula from your blood glucose reading and your blood ketones, ketone reading to assess um, therapeutic efficacy for brain cancer management. Now, that's very, um, very important. Um, so you would keep an eye on that for a while and you can use that to test how you're doing with your diet, what needs altering and tweaking. People have different um, different types, different uh, metabolic flexibilities, you could say, um, different abilities to become more uh, metabolically, more or less metabolically flexible. Um, and I'm quite um, flexible to that, um, which is useful. Uh, my ketones naturally can get quite high, um, and my blood glucose, my blood glucose um, can naturally be quite low. So that is helpful for me personally. Um, alongside the ketogenic diet, I would definitely recommend or suggest having hyperbaric oxygen therapy um, in the animal studies with the dogs in particular. I'm referring to keto pets. Um, 
I'll put a link down below if you don't know what that is. Um, it's dogs on a ketogenic diet who are having hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This is the dogs who have hyperbaric oxygen therapy, the effective um, pressure in the hyperbaric chamber appears to be 2.2 um, atmospheres. So a human doing this would go for um, typically four to six weeks um, and gradually increasing the pressure in the chamber. Um, and the therapeutic zone proposed for these canines with um, brain tumors, and dogs get a lot of brain tumors, more than humans, I think, um, is 2.2 atmospheres. So you could suggest that for a human, 2.2 atmospheres may also be therapeutic. Um, interesting. So this is what I think might be useful. You can have your own ideas. Also, it might be worth considering that with fasting, um, fasting can be a useful intervention. However, um, I was about to mention this conference I attended. So, um, I have been reading up on, and I've been listening to lectures on macropinocytosis, which is a mechanism um, by which highly malignant, usually highly malignant tumours, not always, um, but mostly highly malignant tumours, uh, have the ability to scavenge for nutrients. So they, um, in, in the absence of, in the absence of nutrients, um, in and around the tumour, so if you're fasting, say, or restricting certain amino acids or um, maybe even inhibiting certain enzymes involved with um, metabolism um, of certain nutrients, um, uptake of certain nutrients in that way, that tumours are able to the cancer cells are able to adapt and use other fuels for energy. And in this case of macropinocytosis, what they're doing is they're scavenging and taking up cellular debris. So it made me think of how one of the hallmarks of glioblastoma can be that there is this necrotic tissue lying around, this dead tissue that's just there. Um, and it can cause a lot of problems, um, but also the malignant cells can kind of engulf those cells to provide more, uh, another substrate to proliferate more and to spread more. Um, I think it's the same thing, but you, you know what I mean. Um, I mean, it's the same kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's um, something that needs to be considered because maybe if you have hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which one of the things it's indicated for is uh, necrotic for necrotic tissue in the brain, it kind of helps to clear that out. Um, maybe it can help to prevent this. Uh, macropinocytosis happening. Maybe that would be interesting to see. And with the hyperbaric oxygen therapy, what you're doing is you're taking up 100% oxygen in a pressurized environment. So more goes to the tissues. In normal air, we have around 20% oxygen. So it's a huge difference. And 20% of your whole metabolism is. Uh, used by the brain. So, um, it works in similar fashion but completely differently because it's not detrimental <laughs> to your health, not going to cause a secondary cancer, not likely. Um, 
In similar fashion to radiotherapy, with the increase in reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species, however, it's not going to damage the DNA in the in in that way that you were <laughs> with ionizing radiation that causes secondary cancers over time. It's not doing that. It's doing it in a kind way. So it's putting, placing oxidative stress on the area. Uh, with cancer you have hypoxia, so it's exploiting that by um, adding synergy with the ketogenic diet to place more stress on those cancer cells and also to allow those healthy cells to um, to thrive and to heal if there's damage there, which ionizing radiation does the complete opposite. Healthy cells, it can make them malignant or just, <laughs> just damage them as well. Just, yeah, really horrible stuff. Um, so, just, it would be really interesting in future if that could be an alternative to radiotherapy. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I would have the ketogenic diet with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And um, I would keep in mind macropenocytosis, just thinking, um, well, would that be helpful for that or not? I don't know, but it makes sense how it could be. Um, and also keeping in mind the therapeutic level of being in the hyperbaric chamber, 2.2 uh, atmospheres. It could be that if, it, if it's too low, it could cause the cancer to actually become worse. I don't know about that, it's just theoretical. Because with cancer you do have reactive oxygen species, but not to such a level where you're placing such stress on those cells. And it's, it's in a way that you're having increasing amounts of what's called hypoxia responsive elements. So it's becoming more and more hypoxic. And this, this, the, the, it's angiogenic, so it's creating more and more blood vessels to um, provide nutrients to the tumours so you can grow and grow. Uh, so yeah, those are my thoughts today. Let me know what you think. I'll try and provide some information and links below pertaining to the things I've discussed. The, um, the therapeutic ketogenic diet, um, macropenocytosis, which I wrote about in a recent blog article, just, um, blog post rather just in reference to that conference, try and write about that a bit more, because I'm still learning about it. Um, I'll put something below about the books, um, which I thoroughly recommend, um, and the Glucose Ketone Index. Um, very important for monitoring efficacy on a therapeutic ketogenic diet. I will also Put some more information about a therapeutic ketogenic diet below and I will add on to that um, the importance of nutrient density. So you not only want to achieve therapeutic ketosis, you will also want to make sure your uh, fatty acid ratio is, is good. So your omega-3, 6, 9 ratio, you want that to be um, well, with the omega-3 and 6, you want it as close to 1 to 1 as possible. And the omega-9 can... It does have its benefits. It's not one of the... Uh, we, we, we don't have problems producing that. You don't need to take it so much into the diet to be aware of it. It's, it's easy to get um, enough of them. So, yeah. 
um, but it does have its own benefits. So, yeah, that's uh, all I have to say for today. Hope you found that useful, and um, I will update you about anything else that comes into my mind. Um, and I hope you have a nice day, whatever time it is when you're watching this.